Hey, World of Vision fans, welcome back to another episode of World of Visions. I'm your host, the Global Original Nash Taters. Today, we're going to talk about the new accessory that is coming out along with the Golem Raid. Now, by the way, there are plenty of YouTubers that are actually covering the tale how the strategy should be approached with the Golem Raid. So I'm not really going to go into too much details on that. However, I'm going to touch up a little bit on the Golem Raid, and I'm going to show you if I feel like the Defense Bracers is worth your time. The Golem Raid will be upon us on Wednesday morning, and it will be lasting from the 10th to the 16th. Every raid only gives us one week, so it is important to think about if it's really worth spending your most valuable resource, time. Now, before we go into the actual discussion of the Defense Bracers, we need to take a look at how strategy-wise we should be using against the Golem. Golem, as many of us know, is of the Earth element. His weakness is going to be against magic attacks. The Tomberry is going to be a rare, rare boss, and his element is going to be ice, and he's going to be weak to strike attacks. And strategy-wise, I don't really think their overthinking needs to be involved. Simply go with whatever you feel like you have the most to do the most damage. Now, obviously, there are going to be bonuses when you select units, and let's take a look at that quickly. So obviously, large will involve the newer units will be Raldor, Garvel, and Elsarel. Now, if you noticed, none of those units are actually of the wind element. So therefore, ideally speaking, you're probably going to be using perhaps one of those to bring to obviously the Tomberry raids so you can get the most amount of raid points. And of course, if you're comfortable enough to bring one of those units, to be able to solo against the golem early on you should be able to take advantage of that by getting some of the bonuses the bonus drop rates now can give you really nice items if it actually triggers but for the actual farming purposes looks like howlet will most likely be your best bet and since he's not a limited time unit most of us maybe just maybe have access to him so he should be perhaps your go-to unit in terms of actually farming normal hard content of the raid. I believe the golem actually could be stopped in terms of using time, steel time. So Ziza actually can come in handy in terms of helping you also use bonus raids if you do not have Hallet. A lot of players probably already have Halloween Little Leela. So that's another good unit you can use. One of the strategies I learned over time is during the early stages, levels 1 to perhaps 50, if you have a very strong unit that can solo the entire raid, you can actually just use your number one power damage unit along with one of these large bonus rate units. Therefore, you should be able to defeat all the content up to perhaps level 150 to gain maximized bonuses. So as I mentioned in my intro, there are plenty of content creators that are actually going to a deep dive in the strategy of Golem. For me, I'm not going to go to deep dive. However, all I can say is chaining is by far the most important thing you need to think about when it comes to the harder stages when you're farming. Also, as I'm learning, when you're using your metals, you most likely should be buying the recipes first. Anything you have additional, you should spend on whatever you choose. Since it actually goes up to level 100, your best bet is if you can actually farm level 100 by using only one rate orb you ideally want to take advantage of that. Therefore, you want to go ahead and farm as much as possible because that is definitely the best bang for your buck in terms of gaining recipe materials. Now, let's go over actual stats of the defensive bracer. The bracer obviously is an accessory and the granting ability is actually quite interesting. Upon awakening, you will get disable resistance of 25. So when you get the defensive bracer all the way up to plus five, you actually obtain a new skill. And this skill is going to be missile attack resistance up to 25 for three turns from the start of battle. This is something we have not seen on the global server yet, where you actually gain some sort of ability in which you can actually trigger and it only lasts three turns. So as you can see, the HP will be 280 unless you're going for the vital, which will give you 401 which is actually not too bad for an accessory. Now, when in terms of aim, you'll get 15 accuracy. The Alexandra ring actually gives you 20 accuracy. 
Now, if you're gonna go for the shield, it does give you 16 defense and six spirit. The way I look at it is anything under 10 of any sort of defensive stat is most likely not that great, right? I mean, it's good, but it's not great. So in my honest opinion, if you went with the Elf Cloak for shield, it also gives you 16 defense, and on top of it, it gives you critical avoidance, which is something that can come quite in handy in terms of PvP content. So in this case, it does give you five ev evasion, but is that truly worth making this entire recipe, spending all of those different materials to craft? I think individuals have to make that decision. But personally, I don't think the defensive bracer is all that great because you could do better with accuracy with the Alexandra ring and you could do better in terms of more defensive stats using the Elf's Cloak. And unless you're going for Vado, which is most likely not recommended by any player out there, this leaves it into a bind. I think the only thing you can need to think about in terms of making a decision if you want this is of course the disable up to 25 resistance. This actually is really good in terms of PvP content, especially when you're facing units like Dwayne and Nivlu and perhaps even Agrius herself. Now the thing is though, if you're facing a lot of those units in Guild Wars, this is definitely something I personally recommend in building. But if you're really not going against too many of those units, this unit only comes in handy when it goes into a niche condition in which it gets harder content, perhaps say like the Porcelain Tower, where you're facing a lot of enemy units that can disable your tanks. This could be useful, but we already have other accessories or other equipment that can allow you to have disable, and most likely you probably already built that. So the question you really have to ask yourself finally really is, it boils down to do you really care about the missile attack resistance for up to three turns from the spark start of the battle? And that generally speaking is not gonna be really worth it, especially if you're just trying to survive a very neat situation. The example would be you're facing a brutal difficulty where there's tons of archers or gunners of the sorts and they're going to do you a lot of damage against your front line, in which case you really need that extra missile resistance. I can't really think of me spending hundreds of hours potentially building this item just to face that one situation. If that situation is too hard for you anyways, and you feel like the rewards for that situation isn't worth it, in my honest opinion, skip it. Because there's nothing wrong with skipping content in a video game, because it ultimately boils down to value versus time spent. If you're not getting proper value for the amount of resources you're investing, in my opinion, it's never worth doing. And unfortunately, the defense bracer falls in potentially into that category that it most likely is something you don't really need because there are so many situations that this bracer will shine the most that most likely is niche. You have to really think about, is it truly worth your most valuable resource? Maybe you should better off concentrating and getting something else with this rate. And there are gonna be two items offered. One is gonna be the Elf Cloak, and the other one is gonna be the Alexandra Ring. So now let's take a look at the Alexandra Ring. I have the Aim Type, which is highly recommended for those of you who wanna go for the Alexandra Ring. As you can see, the HP is not as impressive at a solid 159 max, and of course, the defensive stats, there's nothing to write home about. So the real thing we wanna look at would be the Accuracy, which is a solid 20. As you can see, when fully awakened, it also gives you all elemental attack resistance by 5%. This is actually really, really good. So in my honest opinion, I would probably recommend Alexandra Ring if you're going for the aim type of the defense bracer. Now let's finally take a look at Elf's Cloak. The Elf's Cloak gives you a solid 384 HP. Defense, obviously we talked about, will give you 16 if you chose the shield version and of course critical it will be give you zero and the other thing we talked about was critical evasion it gives you a solid 14 when maxed and of course evasion is only three so we're not really going to worry too much about it but at plus five it gives you a pierce attack resistance of 10 and if you get it all the way awake in the five star it will give you confusion resistance up to 25 percent so as you can see this is much much better in my opinion but then the defense bracer if you're choosing the shield type. So in summary, I feel like the defensive bracer is a very niche item. And most likely, in my honest opinion, I will not be going for full 63 recipes for it. I'll most likely try to finish either my Alexandra ring or finish up the elf cloak, which I think both are gonna be very good for my either tanks or attackers who needs accuracy. So overall, I don't think the defensive bracer can be on my 
recommended list. So the final Nash Taters is only perhaps one thumbs up instead of two. So all I can say is I wish you the best of luck if you're going to be farming for anything for the raid. All right, that's all the time I have for this video. I want to thank y'all for watching. I want to thank y'all for support. Now, to end this video, if you made it this far, I want to reward you with my summons. Let's go ahead and get it started here. I'm going to ahead and start off with the MR Guaranteed Unit Summon first. Now, I think I'm only a few shards short of Fina, so that's kind of my goal. Hopefully, I can get her done, and that is not her. Fina will essentially give me the bow, will allow me the charm. So I think that will come quite handy when it comes to the Porcelain Tower or perhaps Brutal Difficulty. Yesterday, I spent a lot of my time finishing off the Brutal Difficulty for the Agitator one. And I noticed that I was actually using still charming abilities because it helped me quite easily dispose of enemy units while I have a few of their enemy units on my side while charming them. So I think that was very useful. And I think I'm going to be working on the resonances for Ziza since she will be quite powerful when Jop EX25 rolls around. So let's go ahead and finish this off with my final summons for this week's free 10x summons daily. We have a chance here, folks. We do have a chance of getting a new unit. And the one I'm looking for will be, of course, the Korra. But at this point, I'll take pretty much anything, to be honest, because... You know, it's free, so I have to take it first off. <laughs> Remember I said I hate when people say, oh, I'll take it, I'll take it. Well, unfortunately, you have to because it's literally just handed to you, you know, on a silver platter. There's no way to reject it. I wish I could reject it, right? I mean, that'd be kind of fun if I can reject it. But here, we, here we go, boys. Moment of truth. Is it going to switch? And no. All right. Remember, folks, time is your most valuable resource. Spend it wisely. Until next time, take care of yourself and all your loved ones. Nash Taters Alley here. Take care.